Well, actually, you don't need to go to college for computer science. You, need, you could do a coding for, class in a couple months. You could and do a get coding class. Oh, this is going to be a tough video. Let's explain Dijkstra's algorithm using brain rock. He is a genius. We're going to make computers smarter so that they don't have to learn computer science. <laughs> I have several years of experience in software engineering, two computer science degrees from Georgia Tech, and every single day I help hundreds of thousands of students learn about tech, break into tech, and land their first software engineering internship or job. And so in today's video, I'm gonna be reviewing a few software engineering TikToks, some of which are good, and some of which are utter nonsense, and you should be glad that TikTok's pretty much banned at this point. And without further ado, let's get right to it. College is a scam. For, for but, computer science, they shouldn't go to college. Well, actually, you don't need to go to college for computer science. You don't need to go to college. No. You don't need to, but it does help. You need to go to college no, for computer you, science? You could do a coding for, class in a couple months. You could and do get a coding a job. class. Yes. Yeah. Al Alphabet is hiring right now. Al Fa you could Alphabet? get a job at Alphabet, Google, yes. taking a seat. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Google, Alphabet, the company that has less than a 1% acceptance rate, a company in which it's easier to get into Harvard than it is to get into that said company. That company is willing to hire people after one C++ class. Yes. Taking a C++ class? Correct, yes. 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 They're hiring coders after a 60 okay. day coding class. Hold up, okay, okay. This is why you need to be really careful about what you consume online. College is a scam, like sure, some majors, they aren't worth the money, they aren't worth the debt. You might spend $100,000 just to make $30,000 per year. But Google, a company in which they pay $200,000 for entry level software engineers, you're telling me I can just take a 60 day coding class and then get that type of money? Like, no, you are very, very wrong, very misguided for saying that. In fact, a quick Google search, if we just search this up, Google software engineer. First requirement, bachelor's degree. Okay, maybe that, that was a fluke, let's look at another job. Again, bachelor's degree. Going to college might not specifically land you that job, but not going to college could potentially hurt you from getting one. Especially in computer science, I went to Georgia Tech and I can tell you for a fact, there are some companies who only recruit from certain colleges in that they had pretty much 10 target schools that they wanted to hire. Like tech companies want the best of the best employees and where do they get them? They get them at UC Berkeley's, MIT's, Georgia Tech's. And so having that just sheer name on my resume boosted me up so much more than pretty much any other applicants in that pool. Eight billion people did not get a degree in computer science. What are you doing to democratize this world? We're gonna make computers smarter so that they don't have to learn computer science to program a computer. The computer should just understand what we want. <laughs> NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang has been caught saying some pretty controversial things over the last couple of years. His company NVIDIA obviously is spearheading a lot of initiatives in this AI field and a lot of people based on what he is saying are really scared of what's going to happen. And I don't blame you because it is scary when he says that you don't need to learn computer science or AI is going to write all the code for you and you're seeing reports at Google in which 25% of their code is already AI written or Mark Zuckerberg saying he has an AI that's unleashing out in 2025 that is equivalent to a level engineer, you start scratching your head and thinking, should I even major in computer science? Should I even learn to code? And my response to all of that is this story. Software engineering a really long time ago, it wasn't the Python, it wasn't the Java that you see today. We would actually be dealing with physical punch cards to accomplish tasks. Then after some time, we dealt with low level programming languages. Then we got into high level programming languages and like the JavaScripts, the Pythons of the world. Now we're entering into an era where it's AI written code and we as computer science people, we need to understand the code and we need to understand how to use the AI to write better code overall. Just how like in the 1990s, there were a lot of physical stores that were doing really well, like for example, Blockbuster. But then once the era of the internet took over, the people who adapted and learned the new technology, they succeeded. And hence you see Netflix continue to boom into 2025. So my advice to you all is yes, pursue computer science in 2025, but make sure every single semester learn something in relation to AI. If you're not in university, Andrew NG, I believe he's from Stanford, has a lot of excellent AI resources on Coursera. So make sure to check it out and make sure to do these two things. One, learn how the AI works. And two, learn how to use AI tools to make you a better developer. Let's explain Dijkstra's algorithm using brain rot. This can't be real. So we have Kondo Dingo and he wants to get from GAT A to GAT F. He needs to get there with the shortest path possible so he can stick out his guy at for the Rizzler. The first thing we have to do is pick our starting guy at. And in this case, we're going to choose A then all we have to do is pick the shortest path to the next guy at. The proper names for the gods are called nodes or vertexes and these lines connecting them are called edges, not edging. So we're gonna be using a little bit of grim and shake to trace our path here. And we see the shortest path from gat A is gonna to be to gat B because it costs us four aura points. Then our next shortest path is gonna be from A to C. And this gives us two paths in a way. You're gonna see. 
And then we get the next shortest path is going to be from C to E, and that costs us four, and the next one's E to F. But let's check out this other path too. And we can't go from B to E because it is shorter, but we already visited the GAT E. You can't visit two GATs twice. So we're going to go B to D. That is true. E, and that costs us nine ore points. And we go D to F, and that costs us three ore points. Now we're going to add up both of the paths, and we're going to see which one costs us less ore points. So we added both paths, and we got A, C, E, F as a shorter path. And I'm sorry to tell you, if you understood any of this, you're cooked. I can't save you. I'm not gonna lie, about 95% of the terminology, I had no idea what you were saying, but he is a genius. He's appealing to Gen Z, Gen Alpha very, very well, and he is very correct in Dijkstra's algorithm. That is pretty much how you solve it. You can't visit two nodes twice, and you have to calculate the shortest distance possible using essentially a priority queue, but he didn't actually mention priority queue. I think he used different uh, terminologies for that, but that's how you solve it. You weigh the different paths as you're adding it in to get the lowest cost possible. I approve. Do not apply for internships if you're a freshman. Oh, this is gonna be a tough video. Your chances of getting hired are very low. Unless you somehow have a ton of relevant experience, upperclassmen are going to eat you alive. I could not disagree more. Not only do they have more experience, but they've also learned more through their curriculum. That is true. However, everything you learn in computer science does not translate into a software engineering internship. They are two very different skill sets. And if you learn one, doesn't mean you're a master of the other and vice versa. Here's what you should focus on instead. Focus on getting acquainted to your new environment and performing very well in your classes. Classes you're taking right now form the basis for all the education you're going to receive in the next four years. Some of that is true, especially object-oriented programming, data structures and algorithms, very, very important classes. But typically freshmen, you take general education requirements, which typically do not matter whatsoever in your computer science degree. If you perform badly right now, it'll likely have a negative impact on your academic career going forward. I had a 3.2 GPA after my first semester in college and it put me in a really big hole. I'm not sure when he graduated college, but if you're in computer science in college right now, your GPA does not matter that much. I've only had one company ever ask me what my GPA was and they just want to see my transcript to make sure I had above a 3.0. So like focus on like your internship and getting your bag over your grades. So I did graduate with a 3.8. It felt like I was fighting an uphill battle the entire way through college. No company wants to hire you if you don't know anything. So focusing on mastery of your- And GPA does not mean you know everything. Mastery of your material will take you far. Setting yourself up for success success your sophomore junior and senior year is going to be a much better alternative trust me thank me later follow me for more advice honestly i disagree with that video on so many different levels because i am personally of the belief that you should always apply for internships yes even if you're a freshman yes even if the only experience you have under your belt is ap computer science or even if not that still apply because guess what the worst thing that can happen is they say no and guess what even if you apply maybe you might get an online assessment or even a first round interview that you tremendously fail that is still fine because you will go through the interview process and you'll at least learn something. My freshman year, I got a software engineering internship at Amazon. And the only experience I had before then was AP computer science. And so I'm a very firm believer that you should always shoot your shots. And the reason I was able to pass that final round interview at Amazon was because I failed so many interviews before then. I've applied to so many jobs before then. And it was kind of through the lessons that I learned. And I believe in my final round interview, I had a very similar question to something I've had before. That's how I was able to pass it with flying colors. I was able to get the pretty much optimal solution very quickly. And so if you're watching out there, I don't care what the end result is. I don't care if you end up landing an internship or not, but just shoot your shot. You miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. And so you might as well just shoot your shot and see if there's a company that's willing to give you a chance. They gave me a chance, so they might even give you a chance. <laughs> This is very much the reality of majoring in computer science. It's one of the most difficult majors with the highest dropout rate. I believe it's one in every 10 people end up dropping the computer science major. And it's for various different things. Sometimes people see videos of the career fairs and they look absolutely cooked like this. And like I said before, it is still one of the best degrees to pursue out there. But the thing is, you just need a couple of key resources to help you in this process because the difficulty might be there, but there are some sneaky little tricks for you to actually get ahead in terms of computer science. The first resource I got, and no, this is not sponsored in any sort of way, it is pythontutor.com. This website is so awesome because it'll go through the Python code with you, like the Python code you write, and it'll walk you step-by-step step how each line is being executed and what the internal 
variables actually hold and what the function calls are being made as it's going through the process. And the nice thing is it's available in Python, Java, C, C++, and JavaScript. And I don't know about you, but I'm a visual learner. And so this just kind of puts things into perspective for me. The second website is MIT Open Courseware, and this is excellent for actually passing each one of your classes. So you go onto those website and search computer science and then hit the search button. And once you go in, you select a course that actually matches the course that you're actually looking into. And so in this case, I'll pick this one. And then boom, right then and there, you see problem sets, exams with solutions plus lecture videos. What I love about this is there's only so much variability within computer science. Like computer science 101 from one university to the next university, they're probably gonna have at least like a 60% overlap, just concept wise. And so if you could just understand the concepts, whether that be at your university or a different one, and then you can actually do practice problems by doing certain exams and actually verifying your solutions. That's actually how you learn so much in computer science. So hopefully after this, you should be able to get a good amount of sleep. We're comp sci majors. We haven't showered in three weeks. What do you mean we? We're comp sci majors and no, we can't hang out. We have a coding project to work on. We're comp sci majors and we think we're better than you because well, we are. There's a pretty crazy amount of elitism in computer science. So just watch out if you're a freshman. I'm sorry, majors, and after getting our bachelor's degree, we can still only write hello world. This is actually a big problem where there's a lot of computer science majors. For some reason, they don't know how to code, whether they cheated or they just didn't learn it through their curriculum. I really don't know how this happens. But honestly, if you're not continuously building projects in computer science, what are you doing? And if you're not in the degree, one of the best resources I recommend is this practical tutorials GitHub. I'll link it down in the description. It has for various different languages, some serious like projects that you can do, which will not only teach you how to code a little better than probably your university at this point, but it'll also be something that you can throw up on your resume. Comp sci majors, we got a coding internship and did zero coding. We're comp sci majors. Wait, what's deodorant? So all this shower and deodorant memes, I honestly thought they were just memes up until I actually went into university. You see, when I was at university, there would be these hackathons in which people would go into the College of Computing and spend seven two hours coding up a project and there would be signs on the outside saying please don't forget to shower or please take a shower because apparently these people would just want to code 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 all the time and they would forget basic things like showering and so that's when I realized that there was some truth to these memes. We're comp sci majors. I wrote a 50 line code and somehow got an error on line 85. We're comp sci majors. I have no idea how to code. The only thing my major taught me was how to use stack overflow in Google. We're comp sci majors. We all have at least one startup idea that is guaranteed to make us million dollars. Oh, so true. So true. Especially if you go to like uh, UC Berkeley, Stanford, one of those West Coast based schools, everyone will have a startup idea. It's just part of the culture. Overall 10 out of 10 video, highly relatable. I made a brain rot programming language. All right, check it out. It's just like Python, but with iPad kid vocabulary. So we got glaze instead of import. We got chat is this real for an if statement. We got let him cook for a while. We got just put the fries in the bag row for break. And the crazy part is it actually works. This file is called example.gat. If I just run it with my pygat script, it actually runs. And you can check out the official pygat website right now. There's even a documentation page so you can see exactly what you're writing. So printing is yapping. True means aura. False. Cooked. Death. Bop. Import. Glaze. I don't know if I'm impressed or just concerned about the state of humanity at this point. 50, 100, 200 years down the line when AI fully takes over society and and they have all this like mass amount of data of everything that has transpired in human history. Are they gonna look at this era of TikTok kids, iPad kids, and brain rot vocabulary terminology and be like, thank God we took over because humankind were heading into some really weird stuff. Do they teach this in university nowadays? It's been almost like three years since I graduated. What is going on? But the person who didn't make that video, honestly a genius. He knows his exact target audience. So kudos to you. Well, that's about all I have in this video. I really hope that you guys liked it. And if you did, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. And if you want more of these reaction type videos, let me know down below in the comments. And if you're interested in landing your first software engineering internship this summer, make sure to check out this video right here.